go. I'd like to call the uh, ordinance committee meeting to order for Tuesday, January 20th, 2015. First ordinance meeting of the new year. Um, Councillor Katarina is here. Councillor Blaze is here. Tracy is here. Thank you, Tracy, for taking notes. And um, Town Manager Hall is here. Um, that takes care of our attendance. And, you and item number three, approval of the minutes. Is there a motion? Move for approval. Second. Do I do have, have a question, though, about sure. the meeting. Sure, go ahead. Um, there was an item on there that we voted to move to today, and I didn't see that item on today's agenda. It had to do with the uh, language on property tax assistance ordinance. And that's due to the failure on the part of your town manager. Oh, okay. Well, blame me then. <laughs> Just wondering. <laughs> the minutes are accurate. <laughs> minutes are accurate. <laughs> okay. So we'll make note of that, and we'll make sure it's on yeah, next the next month. agenda. Yep. Yeah, Absolutely. Good, yeah. it'll, we'll make it be, we'll have it first. Okay. Great. All right. So other than that, anything else? Are we good then? Oh. Yeah. Okay. So all those in favor? Uh, item number four, discussion on open burning regulations. Like Councillor Blaze. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to table that uh, because we're still waiting for some information from the Chief of Police. Uh, we don't have that, so... Uh, yeah, I don't, I'm still waiting for one other thing. Yes, I know. Thank you for... That's Thank you for that. Police. That's not That's all. Or, or in Tucson. Yeah, and, 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 but I think what, Ed, not to, because this all. Anyway, he's got a motion yet. on the table. He does have a motion, so can we. I will second it for the purpose you. of uh, discussion. Okay, so our thought on this, not to cut, I, I cut you off, was we are waiting for more information to come in, and we have not had time to review that, so rather than make um, a hurried decision on that. Um, uh, my feeling and my feeling was that I would prefer to wait until next month. Yes. Madam Chair, uh, I disagree. Um, I feel that uh, in the, uh, in the uh, investigating, I can't even think today, <laughs> investigating that I've done, uh, in the last month uh, regarding like over 39 calls for service. Um, there was court lawsuits back and forth and harassment orders and this and that and the other thing. Um, I, I strongly feel that this is a, it's an issue between neighbors. Mm -hmm. It does not rise to the level of requiring the town to make any changes to burning ordinances that have worked fine. I know that it was noted, and you can see in the notes from last uh, meeting, that Chief Thurlow mentioned that we, he may get two or three complaints a year in the rest of the town of Scarborough. Um, I just don't think this rises to needing to have us have any further discussion. And um, that's where I am. Okay. How do you feel about that? Well, I'm, I kind of agree with uh, Jean Marie, but if you want to wait, I don't know what other information we're going to get. I, I do have... I don't have that. Well, this just came to me uh, right. 11.15 today, so I apologize for no, not no, giving it's it to not you, yours. but Sorry. it was in response to Councillor Katarina's r request for... Uh, further input from public safety as to how widespread uh, and the nature of these calls are. Uh, and to paraphrase, essentially, they are fairly uh, sporadic uh, in few numbers elsewhere in town. Um, so there's no formal report. I'm not sure if there's enough right. uh, substance worthy of, a, of any more detail than that. Okay. Just to kind of um, round out that side of the conversation. Okay. My feeling was that I felt like because she took the time, the effort, um, to come here before us. Um, I felt like I owed her more um, review of this material because I had not had time to look at these calls. We just got this information today, I think, this morning. Yeah. So I haven't even had a chance to look at any of this. I, I don't, I just felt like she was owed more um, 
than us just passing it off. So that's where I stand. So can I make a motion to amend? Yes, you can. Motion. Um, uh, I'm not. No, can you I not. or can't? Okay. I think you need to. I'm not, no, we first okay. we need to vote, vote on, on it. Right. On Ed's motion. Okay. So the motion on the floor at this point is to table it to next month. And that was Ed's motion. So all those in favor. Just one, Tracy. I would like to make a motion to table indefinitely. Okay. To table Discussion? indefinitely. Okay. So in other words, we're not going to do anything, period? No. Gotcha. I'll second that. Okay. I obviously disagree. I think that's think I think that's too bad. I think that's a, not doing. Um, what are we going to find out between that? I'm not saying we. Oh, I'm not saying we will. I'm not saying that I I even agree with us doing anything. I'm saying that I felt like I owed it to her because she brought forth all this time and effort mm -hmm. and she came to us with all this information mm -hmm. that I felt like I owed it to her to really look into this. So that's that, that's all I was saying. I certainly uh, completely understand where um, my fellow counselors are coming from. Madam Chair, I, I, I mean I feel that um, the complainant um, had her time before us. Uh, she did, she brought her attorneys in here. She spoke at length. Um, I've certainly, um, I know I've, I have enough information to make my decision. So. Yep. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's. I think we're going to, we, we're subjecting ourselves to a slippery slope. So. Um, okay. Do you have anything else? No. Just okay. If it helps the conversation, um, I think there's sufficient flexibility afforded to staff uh, uh, through the state law requirements mm -hmm. under the nuisance yep. provision. Yep. Uh, and certainly through this, we've been provided some additional information regarding unique medical condition. Um, I'll make certain that the staff is aware of this and takes that in consideration. That's not to say, however, that uh, you know, the person that responds to those complaints will make it uh, a judgment call as to whether a nuisance right. is occurring or not. Um, so. It's not fail-safe, but certainly we know more about the particular situation today than we did before. Yep. Okay. Um, I think you, we have a motion on the table. So all of those in favor of Jean Marie's um, amendment? All those opposed? Two, one. That's the vote. Okay, moving on. Item number five, discussion on the parking at Pine Point. Tom, do you want to start this? Yeah, this is a holdover from last year. Um, certainly, Councillor St. Clair was part of that conversation. Forgive me, I, I don't recall whether the, mm -mm. the other two members were involved as well. But this is an issue that has materialized over the last couple of seasons, I'll say, really came to a bit of a, yeah. um, a head such that the, the committee um, wanted to take it up and consider. Uh, there's a lot of theories uh, as to what what's happening down there that's causing a parking problem that historically has not been. Uh, my theory is that, uh, frankly, we've created a, a bit of the problem ourselves and that the success yeah. of the new access <laughs> to the beach uh, off King Street is largely responsible for people <coughs> parking proximate to that area. Yeah. Uh, there may be other phenomena at play as well. Um, in the course of the consideration, uh, this committee heard from a number of business owners immediately in that vicinity, right. Glam Bank in particular, yeah. who really valued the potential or the opportunity for on-street parking yeah. to benefit uh, overflow with their business. And they also talked, as I recall, about their businesses being affected by beachgoers parking their lot and causing problems for them. Well, and the, the, the place across the street, the landing, the landing, the landing right. overflowing into on occasion, correct. Into the Bakes parking lot. Right, uh, and so for all those sorts of reasons, and it was late in the season, I think the committee wisely said, let's just take a little time. <coughs> we put it back on this agenda uh, really to make sure that we started the conversation early enough that we could maybe have a solution in right. time for the spring. Yeah. So the facts on the ground really haven't changed. Yeah. Uh, there certainly is parking that occurs uh, on both sides of Pine Point Road, essentially from the uh, overpass down to the corner, yeah. down to East Grand. Uh, and interestingly, uh, there and is... that's legal. It is legal. <coughs> yeah. There's no prohibition. Yeah. Uh, there are 
there are setbacks from uh, driveway openings and such that is pro that's signed as such. Right. Uh, but generally speaking, parking is available. Interestingly, uh, it's a unique opportunity, and that section of road has a fairly healthy and paved shoulder. Uh, yeah. And so cars are comfortably, safely out of the travel way. Yeah. Uh, the concerns I've heard expressed and we've witnessed is that it's also an area of heavy pedestrian traffic from further up Pine Point Road and the campgrounds and such. And I think people are genuinely concerned about conflicts between parked cars and, um, and bikers and walkers. So that's kind of where we're at. Um, and, and I know last, last time you took it up, I had the town engineer, yeah. from an engineering perspective, uh, look at what would be possible. Yep. Um, and he's made recommendations in that regard. So that's kind of where we're at. And we're so what were the recommendations? Yeah, could you go over the recommendations, Tom? Essentially, he is uh, suggesting. Right. Yeah, it's in your packet. It's in your packet. I know, but uh, okay. essentially, he's uh, recommending. You know, uh, after careful and uh, I think thorough analysis, uh, specific areas to allow, safely allow on street parking on both sides of the street. It's not the entire length, but it's uh, right. very specific areas. And he's mindful to keep proper setback and distance from driveway openings to make sure site distance is respected. Um, I th and I think that's where we're going to find some of the complaints that we're going to get. I, I, I think there are maybe one or two people in the audience from the Pine Point area, maybe? I don't think no. so. Um, I, we did get a couple emails last year um, mm -hmm. that you and I dealt with um, about the parking. People were concerned about their driveways and um, getting blocked and, you know, right. kids. And, um, you know, when you, uh, when you put parking spaces there, it does – you know, it adds more traffic and, yeah. and people and foot traffic and all that other stuff. But I think there's a need. Um, I don't think we can get away from it at this point. Yeah, you know, the other thing we can do is regularize it by way of painting stripes, uh, you know, striping um, actual spaces, defining limits, yeah. uh, and, and obviously appropriate signage. Keep it more organized. So it's at least uh, consistent and logical in that respect. Right now it's fairly hit or miss, and people are parking catch as you can. Is, this, is it inappropriate to ask about um, metered parking there? No, that's what I was just thinking. You <laughs> can. I I mean, think, what we're talking you? about 25 spaces here. I mean... I'd like the one Portland is, not the individual meters, but like the... I'm not studying it uh, in depth, but I think there's a cost-benefit analysis like that needs Portland to be looked at. Exactly. Uh, the cost of those meters um, compared against the potential revenue. I'm just curious. I mean, normally the people, if this is overflow from the beach, they would be paying to go to the beach, our beaches. Mm -hmm. They're using our beaches. We have to m pay to maintain those beaches. So mm -hmm. why do all these people get free parking when everyone else has to pay for it? That's still a fairly good hike. I mean, that's, yeah, um, I know, I pay, know. You pay a premium at Herd Park because you're right there, on, True. especially right at the beach. True. Well, plus metered parking is a form of traffic control. Yeah. Because people who don't want to run back, if you have a, like a limit of one hour or two hours or whatever, they aren't going to be wanting to run back and forth feeding the meter. Otherwise, they're going to get ticketed right. and whatnot. Right. So to me, that. And I do, I do think, as I recall, I read in some report that came out of this that that was a recommendation of the Transportation Committee. <coughs> we had, was looking at. Well, I think they were observing that. Um, they were. You know, we're, we're potentially losing revenue by yeah. not charging here. Uh, I'm not sure if that's going to that speaks at all. In fact, I don't think it speaks at all to the concerns of kind of safety of right. just having a vehicle occupying space on the shoulder of the road. Well, how, many, uh, how many spaces are we talking about? It says uh, 9 to 10, 5 to 6, 5 well, to 6. 25. It's about 25 in total. 25. What I mean, he's recommending. 25 spaces. Um, and we did do something down there. Didn't we put a sign down there and add like down, by, down on the corner? Oh, yeah, and, and that's under current regulations. The police department with Public Works put up um, no signs parking. on either side, if you will, of the driveway openings. Of the, you can't park at the corner, corner right? or here to okay. opening. Okay. And again, further down, closer to East Grand. So okay. they did that under their current authority. Okay, good. Uh, 
but we've done nothing more than that. Have we heard, um, you, you haven't heard anything from the Clambake people yet? I haven't, um, and no. given their level of interest, as I recall, was pretty heightened. It was. Um, we'd probably be well advised with I, time on our hands to invite them back into the conversation. And I think, I feel like that might have been me dropping the ball, because I think at the end of our last meeting with them, I said I would be in touch with them and um, possibly also at the same time have a meeting with the landing people. Um, yeah, because it's vested interest for both parties. Um, and they, at that time, the Clambake people had had no conversations with the new owners right. of the landing. So it might be a good idea for us to kind of all get together. Maybe we just sit down and... Would and you like to do that as part of a meeting or as a separate workshop? No, okay. I think just, so I think separate, keep it small. Um, it keeps people sort of... Mm -hmm. And then what we get from that, then maybe we bring that back to the committee in either a workshop out of it or sure. just a meeting. Okay. Does that work? Yeah, we can do Are that. Are you guys comfortable with that? Yeah, that's, yeah. Are you okay with that? Okay. So I'll, I'll, uh, I just want to, I just want to understand this. Yeah. It looks like from these pictures that I'm, I'm mm -hmm. seeing, there's 25 spaces mm -hmm. on, well, going towards the ocean, it would be on the left side. On the landing side. Right? The landing. Yeah. No, no, no. Oh, no. Are they oh. on both? Yeah. Snow canning. Right. See, from right. 25, canning road. 25 spaces, but that's on that side of the road. Right. And then that's, there's that's clamping another side. 20 on the other side. Yeah. Uh, right. Okay. And then another yeah, right. And there's 9 Maybe. to 10. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's almost like another this. 20 there. And it was a little confusing yeah. looking at the. So it's 45 like spaces right. altogether that we're talking about. Right. I take it there's no more on the yeah. clam bake side other right. than that 25. Right. Well, I think given the number of driveway openings, he was just recommending let's avoid conflicts because uh, there's four driveway openings yeah. in a short time frame there. Yeah. So basically, if we did that, we would mark off 25 spaces on one side and three sets of other spaces on the other side. Yeah. With 20 spaces or, or some so of them or all of them. Or none of them. I mean, the, the right. options are endless. Right. Yeah. Not endless, but the options are there. And what did the transportation committee we have to say about this? We don't have a formal. Um, I didn't have a. I don't have a formal opinion from them. Do you, Tom? Yes, uh, this is from Dan Bacon. Uh, it says, and I'll, I'll quote: "This evening, the transportation committee reviewed the proposal." for Pine Point Road with on-street parking and shared uh, outlined by the engineer. So what you just looked at, <coughs> they made a motion at the end of the discussion to recommend on-street parking and, share, and shared use lane, but with the following items to be further considered. Fee parking or revenue sources, can, uh, continuity for bicycle use and design, and to examine the speed limit in the area. So essentially they suggested or recommend that what the engineers yeah. suggested is appropriate, but they will further encourage you to look at these other matters as well. Fees, okay. continuity for bicycle use, and speed limit. All right. Yeah. I didn't think about the speed limit. Well, meters oh, or, meters. or yeah, per yeah, meter meters or something, stuff, yeah. presumably. Um, I didn't think about the speed limit piece of it, you know? When you have people parking or parallel parking or well, doing... what's the speed limit down there? It's 35, isn't it? I, I thought it was 25. Uh, it's pretty, I can research it's that. It's pretty I, low. Uh, I suspect... But I, I think it needs to be looked at as part of the whole picture, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Uh, the posted speed limit is um, 25. Okay, yeah. And then, it, and, then, and then it becomes 35 as you get further up uh, yeah. High Point Road. Right, yeah, okay. The problem is... Not the problem, but the tendency, I think, as you're traveling down Point Bright Road, uh, the downhill down. grade. Yeah. I don't know if you get excited when you see the ocean. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I think that, but I, I suspect speeds are, are exceeding that, um, mm. practically speaking. So my feeling on it, and you guys um, definitely chime in, please, is that we pull together that meeting with them, and we also um, should get some feedback from the neighbors the people that our driveways are going to be um, affected. We make sure that they know that we're looking into this just to mm -hmm. see if we could probably draft something really easily, just any quick feedback we could get from them. Um, that kind of goes with some of the stuff that I'm working on right now. Mm -hmm. um, and 
once we get some of that feedback, we come back to so table this for now, and then right. we come back, and then um, we Tom could probably make a presentation to the right. group as to what we came back came but I with. But I but I definitely feel we need to get this moved out to council. I agree. As soon as we can. I agree. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh -huh. Yeah, there's really three property owners that we should talk to. Good. Um, Thurlow owns most of that side right. of the road. Okay. Uh, the landings is, yeah. uh, is a new person we haven't talked to, and then uh, I think it's Pelletier who owns the old snow canning. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. So it's a, it's not a huge perfect long list of folks. Okay. I just want to make sure that they're. But if parking is legal there, what what are you talking to them for? Just a I mean, general. If parking is legal. Well, we're reviewing it, Ed. I think just to because just to see what makes sense. Does it make sense to keep it the way it is now? Does it need to be changed? Should we be metering it? We have, we have, um, I mean, you know, I, I suppose I would approach it by testing uh, their opinion or appetite to the proposal that uh, the engineers come up with, the transportation committee's endorsed. Rather than saying, what do you think, we'll say this is what we're considering right. and get input on it. Right. Just in terms of thorough process. It's, it's, it's all part yeah. of us really trying to be more transparent and let people know what, what, are, what we're talking about. In previous discussions, uh, how much resistance have you gotten on uh, the on street parking and from who? I have had one email from a woman that was concerned about the parking. Yeah, I, admit, uh, I probably have heard from three or four that were generally uh, raised the question about just pedestrian vehicle conflicts. Yeah, and not, bicycles. I've not heard back from them per right. se, but the most direct opposition or concern was from the Thurlows yep. at the last at the last meeting. Yeah, they're very like really interested in this and so as a corollary we're also interested uh, one of the Thurlow properties is under contract and likely to be developed. Uh, we've been working with that new owner about possibly creating a, a off street uh, es uh, um, walkway, sidewalk if you will with a, a grass espalade. So that might be part of the solution going forward yeah. that we provide for okay. safe pedestrian access uh, outside of the nice. travel, you know, the paved right of way. Good. All right. So do you have a motion on the on the floor for this? Someone who wanna make a motion? To table it. I'll make a motion to table it. How second. Uh all those in favor? It's a vote. And and with that motion, though there's yes. not a date certain, I, it's my understanding it's tabled until such time we've solicited uh, input Correct. from the property owners. Yep. And let's, uh, let's get it back onto yeah. the agenda next yeah. month. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. that. I would, I would want it. Yeah. 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 Because like Jean Marie said, um, Councillor Katarina said we need to get it to the yeah. council as soon as possible. Yeah. We can't let another summer go by. Oh, God, no. I, I, I completely agree. Uh, yeah. Okay. Is Thank that you. okay, Tom? Yep. Okay. Excellent. All right, moving on. We're moving today. <laughs> Discussion on parking at Mayview Avenue. Um, who you want to? You want to, Councillor Blaze? Would you like to open this discussion? Yeah, or I can. Um, I know we have some people from the public that want to speak, and um, we're yeah, opening we'll just, hearing from them. Let's just let the, the people from the several people from Higgins Beach. Here. We have a presentation to and make. They have a presentation to make, okay. and they're going to give us a copy of the presentation. We have gotten some copies yes. of pictures online. Yes. Um, and I, but oh, it's yeah, basically about inappropriate behavior on Bayview Avenue down at Higgins Beach. Okay. So. Uh, We've got Barb uh, Bellicos and Barb Bombachi, uh, and they'll they'll give a small presentation. Okay, go ahead. Um, yeah, at the microphone, and can you state your name and address too? Please? I can. Thank you. Um, my name is Barbara Bellicos. I live at 28 Ashton Street down at Higgins Beach, and Barbara Bombachi and I are here today to ask your help in addressing some issues that continue to plague <coughs> us at Higgins Beach. Um, these problems have been presented before, but they persist. And in fact, as the population has grown, the beach has increased in popularity. They don't seem to be going away. Um, as in the past, people changing, nudity, <coughs> male and female, urinating in public, tailgating, public drinking, 
obstructed sidewalks, uh, blaring radios before dawn and after dusk uh, continue to be problems for both residents and our guests, our tourists. Um, these incidents tend to occur year-round now. They're not just limited to the summer. Um, in addition, many of our summer cottages um, have been replaced by full-time residents. So we have more and more people living in Higgins Beach as their neighborhood. The other problem is, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the configuration, but as you come down Ocean Avenue, you either make a left or make a right or go into the ocean. Um, on the right, if you make the left, that's where the bulk of the housing, um, that's where the bulk of the housing mm -hmm. is. So you have no choice but to have to pass this area. Mm -hmm. You cannot avoid it. Right. And if you have children, grandchildren, or just people in general, you can be exposed to these activities whether, whether you like it or not. It had been hoped that with the expansion of the parking lot and the beautiful bath facility that these problems would have sort of disappeared. Unfortunately, they have not. Even with education and signage, um, speaking to people, the parking lot in particular off-season rarely is full. There are always places up there that people can park and use the facilities. Uh, so one, one thing we do want to emphasize is that we remain committed to beach access. This has nothing to do with people using the beach and any of the facilities. It's just that these behaviors are really problematic and, and very upsetting for those of us who live at the beach as well as people who want to enjoy the resources that we have. So we're really asking for your help in coming up with some solution to this. Thank you. Can I ask her a question? Where's she going? Barbara, can I ask you a question? Do you see at the podium um, some of the counselors yeah. possibly have questions for you? Yeah, a quick question is uh, what do you propose as a solution? Well, it would probably be helpful to limit that parking. In, which not, in, in what ways? Well, we do have the parking lot, which, as I said, is, yes, in the prime Time in the summer, it's full, no doubt. Fourth of July, you're not going to get a space. But in particular, off-season, it's rarely full. And there's all, there are bathroom facilities there, so people can use those. They can change. I'm not sure about the showers because of the freezing of the pipes. I don't know if you can showers take Showers are available year round. All year place. round. So you're, they're, you're saying take away the parking altogether? Yeah, which, that's what I'm asking. Is that what you're asking for? Yeah, along the, along the front. I mean, you're not getting any money for it. Except as you were just for, talking about, except for, uh, except for handicap, for handicap, which quite frankly, handicap could really be increased because we have more and more people that are have mobility issues, and if they can't get a parking space along there, then they really can't utilize any of the beach. It's too far, and it's down a hill for them to yeah. park. So handicapped, I think, would be a, a great solution to increase that so more of our people can use the beaches. Um, another question is, when were these pictures taken? Yeah. Uh, this calendar year. 2012. And, 2015. like, for example, there's a sort of a camper thing or something. Did oh. someone Wait, call the police and ask, tell them to... I'm not sure that they did. I don't I mean, know. That, I mean, it's a two-way thing here. Yeah. You know. And it, just so you know, I spend uh, probably two or three days a week Mm -hmm. Walking Higgins Beach, my mother-in-law lives mm -hmm. down there. Um, I occasionally see cars parked probably for longer than they should be. Mm -hmm. I have not witnessed much of what you've got here, but uh, but with that saying, I stay right the heck away from there in July and August. So. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I'll be yeah. honest about that. Yes. Um, but I have a real concern about taking away all all parking down there. Mm -hmm. That's because that we've only got what two streets Why? that are big wide enough for Why? parking. What because it's concern? a public street. There's no there's no and parking there's no parking. there's no parking on any any street down in Higgins Beach. I know it's very Except limited it's, that, no, it's very limited strip. it's very limited to begin with and I I just have an issue with you know it's, a, it's owned by the town of Scarborough, that street, and we have citizens of the town of Scarborough who are not handicapped. Mm -hmm. 
who would also, who do use those parking spaces. In fact, mm-hmm. a lot of them that I see when I'm down there are actually people walking dogs. You know? Oh, yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, that's a different So that's why I'm asking, bell. other than taking parking away, well, what do you suggest as a solution? I, I think it's not realistic to have the police. It's not really fair. They, they, their resources can't be dedicated to something like that. That doesn't make any sense. We've tried signage. Um, like I said, the parking lot, they did a fantastic job on that. But it doesn't seem to be utilized for people that know they're going to change. So in other words, if you go to the beach and you use, you swim, you surf, your kayak yep. or whatever, and you know that you're going to need to take your clothes off, yep. you belong in the parking lot, not on the sidewalk. So yep. I'm not have sure. Have you ever been to European beaches? Yes, okay. I have. <laughs> But um, they think nothing of changing yeah, in the middle of no, the No, they don't. The beach. And, and I have a friend I have to remind when they come visit me in the United States that they can't They can't that. do that or go topless, I know, that yeah. whole thing. But the thing is, is as residents, there's no way to avoid it. I mean, if it was a, in a different place where you didn't have to see it, but you have to see it. You don't. And they're taking their clothes off quickly off-season because they're freezing. Right. So it's not like they're sometimes towels slip, sometimes they don't have time to... Right. They're not thinking about that, but it's just very problematic for people. You just don't know. It's unpredictable, and some people I would think that are concerned about modesty, are concerned about exposing themselves in front of children, minors, etc., would use the parking lot because nobody bothers you up there. You know, if you need to change, hopefully you use the changing area, but right. you could go behind your car and it's fenced and there's brush and trees and it's secluded. You're really, you know, quite exposed along Bayview in that strip. But it would be nice, too, to increase the handicap. We only have two. That I would agree with. I, I really <clears throat> think that would be fair for people. Six. Well, it depends. In the summertime, I think it's maybe, what, 10 spots? 10 parking spots down there? Oh, 13, yeah. Two handicaps. So there's 11, 11 parking spots other than the handicap. And in the wintertime, there's another strip, right, of, what is that, maybe five or six? Another 10 or in 11? In the winter? This is the so-called drop-off zone? No. no. Oh, down below, right. Yeah, down below, yeah. And there always have been, but that. Yeah, but they're not. Those spaces predated right. the Bayview spaces. Yeah, we always used to park on people's front lawns when I was a kid. It's okay. It's okay. Can can we continue the presentation and then get back into the discussion? I'm sorry. I I didn't realize we were... Yeah, I I forgot. There's another bar. There's another bar. Oh, go ahead. I'm I'm so sorry. I didn't realize there was. Um, Please. I hope I'm not too repetitive. No, don't worry. Go ahead. I'll tell you my name and address. Thank you. (laughs) That's all I see. That's all I ask of you. (laughs) Uh, 22 Bayview Avenue, and I've lived there since 1986. But today I just wanted to represent all of my neighbors on Bayview and off Bayview as well because we've all been affected by the inappropriate behavior that, frankly, most neighborhoods wouldn't tolerate. To be sure, only those of us living along Bayview Avenue lose sleep, Um, and that's due to the noise as early as 4 or 5 in the morning and late at night, and it could be any, anybody down there. It could be carouses at night, it could be fishermen in the morning, or it could be anybody. But it's loud voices, loud radios, um, engines revving and car doors slamming. Um, but everyone, everyone at the beach, owners, renters, day trippers, everyone is affected who attempts to walk down Bayview and the sidewalk is taken over by all of these beach users. Beach users changing in or out of the wetsuits on the sidewalk and on the side of the street, surfboards blocking the sidewalk, tubs of water on the sidewalk, and beach users rinsing off. They take over the street between Pearl Street and Morning Street. 
Now, this isn't every single day of every single minute, but it's enough so that it does affect everyone who attempts to walk down the sidewalk at some point during the day. And if that's not intrusion enough, there's occasional tailgating, as you've seen in one of the pictures. And we've seen all kinds of vehicles, anything from pickup trucks to little cars with a trunk open and their chairs on the sidewalk and they're drinking. And um, as I attempt to walk by, I get the feeling that they think I'm invading their space. I'm just an intruder. But drinking in public is an ongoing problem, but urinating in public, um, why do we see so much of it on Bayview? The reason I ask that is because there's, a, as you know, a, a beautiful restroom, public bathhouse, heated, open, 365 days a year, just up the street. You may wonder if I speak to these offenders. Uh, some of the neighbors do. I do occasionally, but there are times when I just don't want to risk it, so I walk on the other side in the street. But I do want to emphasize that the majority of beach users are responsible and respectful, and many use the parking lot and they walk to the beach. And a lot of them are very friendly and they wave and we have a great relationship. It's the minority who cause these problems, and the problems are very real. They're not just what you see on the paper. It's, it's an ongoing bunch of problems. And it affects not just the residents, but everyone who uses the beach, everyone who attempts to walk down the sidewalk. There's a sign on the street as you enter Higgins Beach, respect our neighborhood. The signs, words, and educational material provided by the police department have not changed the, the behavior. I want to be clear, though. We're not attempting to change or restrict beach access. We're simply asking for a remedy for these problems. No other neighborhood in Scarborough that I know of has to deal with these behavior issues. Would this behavior be acceptable in your neighborhood? We ask for your help in finding a solution. Thank you. Um, Can I, I'm, gonna, I, I, I'm gonna go first. Um, I'm going to be really just very frank and honest with you. Um, when I first this first when I first saw this, um, my first gut reaction was, "There's no way I'm going to take away parking from people that ha that have a right to have access to that beach." Um, but there's something that you said in your speech that really has stuck with me and that is would I allow that in my neighborhood and if I open my front door and my children play on the front of my front porch and they and then there were cars parked in front of my house and there was a man like in here mm -hmm. I would be extremely upset and I would call the police I would come to the town I would ask for help and that's what you're doing. Um, so it's, 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 this is a tough one because tough one. it is a really tough one because I, I am a people pleaser by nature. <laughs> I don't like upsetting people. I don't, I, either way, whatever happens, we're going to upset someone because last time when we had this discussion, um, I don't know if you, I don't know if Glennis, if you were here or not when the surfers came in, but there was a a, a, a good so outpouring of mm -hmm. surfers that came in that were extremely upset that we were thinking about taking away some of that parking. Um, I see surfers. And you know what the hard, you know the hard part about it is is it's is it's not the good, you don't want to take it from the good people. Right. You know, the people that use it the right way, you don't want to punish them. Yeah. Um, and we don't, but certainly don't want to punish the people that live there either. Um, so it's such, a, it's such a catch because that's, 
But I did say that the majority are respectful in yeah. the parking lot. And the surfers come down the street and they're smiling. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And if I'm out and um, doing watering they're flowers, they're a very good group of. They speak to you. Yeah. And they're very friendly. And I and I I want to say too that um, I I don't believe in in self policing, and you should never have to. Um, self-police your neighborhood yes. or your um, land um, or the property, even even though that's town owned in front of your house, you still shouldn't have to police that because that could be putting you in a potentially dangerous situation if someone has well, been drinking. We, we have uh, at times called the police. Good. But they say by the time they get there, I know. they have to catch the person yep. in the, they can't do anything. Do they come down at all? Once in a while, mm -hmm. yes, but it's usually delayed because they are in maybe in West Scarborough or, or up in my neighborhood, and up in North Scarborough. You know, yeah. right? That's the problem is, so is we have a police force that that is, especially in the summertime, stretched extremely yeah. thin. Um, and other times, you know, you don't bother because it's we figure it's a waste because. Um, yeah, but let you let Ed go first, and then yeah. then you go. Go ahead. Well, I just want to. I want to let you know that 18 months ago, I came yeah. before the ordinance committee yeah, I know. Um, complaining about this. Yes. Um, and basically what we did is we took it offline. I think it was Tom, myself, Robbie, yeah. Moulton. I don't know whether there's somebody else there or not. But I was. Were you? Mm-hmm. And, and we basically discussed improving, we trying to improve, right, trying to improve. Thank the, you uh, very much. Um, education. And this was a pamphlet yeah. that was created. And it was, you know, explained the fact that we do have a beach house and people should be changing into beach, beach house. And Robbie Moulton had his VIPs yeah. go down there a couple times a week for a half an hour, hour, talk to people, try to educate them. Do you think uh, it helped at all? No. no. What, what's the parking because limit, time limit in those spots? I can't remember. I should know. I walk by it all the time. One hour? In the summer. In the summer, in the and summer. no women in the winter? Yeah. Right. But there's no enforcement of that, is there? I didn't think so. So you could be there for six hours. And yeah, and see, that's an issue to me, that there's no enforcement. But Many times, too, we will see, as again, <laughs> again, when you make that left, if you live down to the left, you have no choice but drive by there. Many out-of-state people. So they're there, and they come from Canada. They come from North Carolina. I mean, Higgins Beach is, is oh, yeah. renowned. Oh, yeah. So these are people that may be there for the day, maybe, who knows. But okay. it's not necessarily right. our residents. But there are I just wanted to ask a rhetorical question. If there were no parking allowed there, um, except for handicapped parking, is that going to eliminate people changing on the beach, people drinking on the beach? I know I've been invited to parties on the beach by uh, residents of Higgins Beach with alcohol. Um, yeah, you know, um, how much is that going to make a difference, Gwyneth, if you don't... Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you no. need to go you on the podium. You need to go up there. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, we're going to drag you up. <laughs> and we need your name and address. <laughs> <laughs> Glennis Chabot, um, Houghton Street. Thank you. Um, it's not on the beach that we're concerned about. It's in the road. This is right. all happening in the road. They're, right, not, right, right they're there. not changing on right. the beach. I mean, obviously, they are drinking on the beach, but that right. is a violation of an ordinance oh, that's in place. But it's in the road that this is all happening. And as Barbara mentioned, uh, when parking was first, there was no parking on Bayview at all until 2011, right. in the summertime, from April 1st to October 1st, I believe. Um, and that first summer, we got the number of tickets. There were close to 500 tickets were written that first summer. Yeah. And there was very few from Scarborough residents. Th these are people that are parking mm -hmm. there for coming from out of town, sure. out of state, um, that are parking for nothing. 
and it goes back to sort of that pine point road, you know, why are they getting free parking? Right. Mm -hmm. Everyone else has to pay, and they are people that are coming from elsewhere. And these are the behavior issues, too. I, I doubt that you would ever see a Scarborough resident stripping naked on Bayview. Yeah. Um, oh, you know, yeah. it, it's the people who come that don't know anybody from right. the area That's that don't true. care, yeah. you know. And or culturally, and they I, come from culture. I have to, yeah. I have to wonder if, if we did have, if we did have those types of meters, people wouldn't be, they wouldn't be as prone to tailgate there if they if they were limited to that uh, time. Hard to tell. I mean, it would be a revenue source. I, I don't know if it would be much of a deterrent for the other behavior I just, that we're I, hearing. I don't know. I, this is as long, a, this as, long is, as people can stop their car. Yeah. They're going to take their gonna, clothes off and put their wetsuits on and yeah. throw their surfboards on the sidewalk so people can't go by and the doors are open. I walked by. I walked through there yesterday afternoon at around 3:30, yeah, and waiting. there were a ton of cars, mm -hmm. and there was a ton of cars parked illegally because there weren't any parking spaces, and they were going yeah. the wrong way, and doors were open, stuff was on the sidewalk. It's a mess. Did you call? And this is January. Did you call? No, I didn't call well, because <laughs> they're not going to come down. I have called them before they're walking not, down there. They they're come not going to come down. I've called them on the dogs, but that's another story. And even if they do come down, the next group's just going to come in and do the same thing. It happens every single day. And how would you like it if they did it in front of your house? Can I ask, uh, this may be totally way off, Proud Snack Association has their own police officer that they pay for. Is that correct, Mr. Hall? Yes. Yes. Has Higgins Beach Association ever considered that? No. Why not? Because Proud well, Pro Pro Snack pays for it's it's round it's yep. round year round. Arguably, they see the value in the winter months even more so because it's yeah, yeah they, close down there. They make sure that you know there's no burglaries or yeah. I mean that's just a suggestion. You, know, you have the Higgins Beach Association. You have a number of people in the area with the year round. You're more and more year round. You've got more and more higher value properties in the area and whatever that it I don't know. Well I'm just saying we've got you've got that with Proud Snack. Okay. I'm just throwing it out to you. Go, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> We're here to talk. We do I, I told I told everybody when we started this year that the ordinance committee was going to be a little different than everything else. <laughs> we run things a little looser. Roger Shabbat, twelve Helen Street. Thank you. Uh, you know, you, you talk about, I, I don't know if, in fact, that you could afford to do that as a community or a neighborhood like yeah. we have, to put that up. I mean, uh, we're paying taxes like you won't believe, and uh, we don't have, I don't think we'd have the support of, of, of everybody, but we haven't gone to that extent as of yet. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is that I wanted to talk about is uh, going to the gym at 5.30 in the morning, whether it be in the uh, spring, fall, summer. I'm going to the gym and I see cars with surfboards. So it starts, like she said, early. Right. And yet we can call the police. <coughs> and, and I've talked to uh, Chief Moulton about trying to get police guys early in the morning to stop that because we have had a lot of complaints from our summer people right. that there are people there early in the morning Making slamming noise. Uh -huh. And unfortunately, they haven't been able to do that. Um, You'd think they'd be looking for stuff to do but that they, early in the morning. The thing I wanted to say is last summer I made it uh, on my own walking down and speaking to as many people as I could that were changing, telling them about what we have, the town, has provided us with a nice bathroom. And I will say I go to the bathroom once in a while to check on cleanliness of that, and I mm -hmm. have to commend the folks here that they keep it clean, and there's no reason, that there isn't any complaints about that place. Mm -hmm. But I have talked to a lot of the Canadian folks, and I can speak in French, and I speak to them in French, of which they're very open, and they say, yeah, they'll use it. 
but they don't. No, yeah. that's right. Cause so it's the education that yeah. we've tried along with the VIP people, and I saw them a couple of years ago do that, yeah. hasn't moved anybody to go to that parking lot. So we're asking for your help to solve that problem that we have at Higgins. I mean, it's I mean, there, it's, and, and the other thing that I wanted to mention is it starts in the morning until 9 o'clock or 11 o'clock, and then it starts again at 5 until dusk. So, so if you go there during the day in the summertime, you won't see those activities as you do early in the morning and late in the evening. And I'm not to hear that earlier that late. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> so that's when folks need to be there, and I think Ed will support that because... Uh, it, it happens not just in the summertime, year-round. sounds like an enforcement issue. That's well, why I keep saying it. It sounds like an well, enforcement your, issue is what well, we've your, already got. No, it's not an enforcement. Will your neighbors have issues um, if we take away those parking, if those parking spots were to be taken away? I'm just no. curious. I'm, like, you, do, they, do, do you guys, do, no, do I, you guys I ever say, use them for, to have people visit you? Or? No. We'll say one thing, and she mentioned it in her report, that the neighborhood of Higgins Beach walk to the ocean or to the beach from no matter where they live. Yeah. Yeah. They don't drive like people think that we do. We do not occupy those spaces. Yeah. The only exception to that would be if you have a handicapped person and you might want to bring them to the no, beach, you'll really. use that. But 99% of the time, we all walk to the beach. Even the surfing population at Higgins put their surfboards on their shoulders and walk to the beach. Okay. And they walk back to use their own facilities at home. Um, I just wanted to an answer Kate's yeah, question sure. about um, the neighbors. Sure. And uh, when this first came up for parking in the uh, summertime, uh, we did a petition at the beach. Yeah. Um, and we didn't go to every house. Um, obviously, I mean, we didn't have a whole lot of time to do that, but we had 269 signatures um, uh -huh. that were requesting no parking. Okay. So, I mean, and, and I'm sure that we could get that again if, if we were. If we needed it. Okay. All right. There's That's helpful. Yes. There's one, the floor, please. There's one other issue uh, that's, that's part of this that, that was briefly mentioned, but, um, and it's not only in the summertime, but it's a safety issue. Mm -hmm. um, the cars that are parked down there um, with their doors open, there's a continual flow of cars going through the community down Ocean Avenue, down Bayview, up Pearl or Morning or Ashton, and they continue to go around waiting for those spots to open up. Is this year round, Ed? Or? Yes. Yeah. Year, year round. I, I haven't seen it in the winter. I've seen it in the shoulders or in a gorgeous place. <laughs> if you went down place. there right now, it would be like that right now. Uh -uh. It was like that yesterday. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, in the summertime, when there are a lot of, when Higgins Beach is full with owners or renters or what have you, uh, and like Gladys was saying, everybody walks to the beach. Oh, yeah. Well, when you're having people walking to the beach on the small, narrow streets, and you have these cars going round and round and round, or backing up, to try to get a parking spot down on Bayview, it's a hazard. And those people don't care. Well, I don't think you're going to stop the cars, per se, even if you didn't have parking, because people oh, yes. like to pull sure up would. by there and look at the water yeah. and whatever. I mean, they've done that forever but down there. This new signage down there says no parking, stopping, or idling, which right. is nice. That doesn't That's mean they don't do it. But well, I, I realize that. The thing is, if you eliminate the parking, another thing, by eliminating the parking, you're taking a big burden off of the police department. Uh, granted, they'd have to go down there. If you changed it, they'd have to go down there initially and make sure that people weren't doing it. But after a while, you tow a few cars, especially the out-of-state cars, and I think habits would change. Well, I think we should be ticketing them or whatever now if they're there more than whatever. I mean, to me, we haven't done the enforcement we said we're going to do, so to go to the next step to eliminate parking makes no darn sense to me, unless we've already tried to enforce 
We do. Well, we've got. We try to do it in the summertime. Said, but you said they you have a call. They the have a bicycle cop down there all summer long. Yeah, and does he take and it, it? And it goes on and on. And this, yeah, do they tow? No. Maybe they should. No. <laughs> I, I would just uh, I want to remind the committee that there certainly are, are other constituencies that were involved in this conversation right. the first time around and certainly the general public so I would just encourage you so you don't know, do something that doesn't that's not thorough in terms of process well, I, that, yeah uh, we're, I, well this is just the beginning and I think Barbara I think it was you that I emailed and said was it you that I emailed? Why was it you? That's two Barbaras. So so I'm so Both sorry. Both Barbara B's, too. Both. Excuse me for that. Um, and said that this is this is going to be a process. Um, yes. Um, and actually, um, the chair of the council, <laughs> Councilor Holbrook, is here. So there I'm going to actually have her speak oh, now. We're going to speak her. today. Um, I, I just want to, for, for maybe some of you councillors that are new, to realize that there was an ad hoc committee that was formed for Higgins right. Beach that went through an entire right. process. That's why we did wind up walking away from allowing parking on, I think, the last few roads down there, the side roads. And then the recommendation, and what you see of that, is the fruition of the sole remaining parking on Bayview, which was also, I might add, an expense to the community. Um, I certainly won't speak for past counselors, but I was there during that process, and um, in my position personally will not change. The beach is not meant for only those that can afford it. My tax dollars also help, just like everybody else's, to maintain those roads. We pay for a police officer in the summer. Clearly, we probably need another one, or he's not doing a good enough job. But there has been an extremely lengthy, ongoing process that happened down there. And I, I just want you to be mindful that this isn't the first time. It's not a new issue. We, we did do something to address that. What you have left is extremely limited compared to what is there. Um, so just can to I, add that. Can I just make a statement? Yeah. Yes, there was an ad hoc committee. And the, but Judy the Roy ad hoc that. committee. Pardon? Sure. Pardon? I think that was Judy Roy that participated right. on that. But the ad hoc committee was also told during their process that they were not to consider the fact that there was a town-owned parking lot being put in. Yeah. As much as, and, and, and I will say it's not a new concept. We do have a town-owned parking lot in Pine Point. We also have probably 50 or so free spaces on street parking down in Pine Point as well, and that was another topic of discussion in the Higgins Beach area um, during some of our deliberations. Um, so again, I was just offering some history, some, some background to it. Um, certainly it's your decision as to where you go with it as an ordinance committee, but you may find it useful to find that report and, yeah. and read those materials again, because as you were saying, as, as Tom alluded to, you do have also another constituency that has a very keen interest on this topic, um, and there was already a lot of input that, that was given for that process. So I actually those might met be with them helpful. Um, when this came up, uh, two years ago, when you first brought it, to when you and I, for our first year on council, it came before us, and I actually met with the surfers union at that time, um, and I'm assuming that they will probably have some, well, we'll have some feedback for this. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. They catch wind of it. Yeah, um, and I will provide the original resolution. That would be wonderful. That had the charge of the mandate yeah. the adult group in the final report. Um, as I recall, one of the charges in that was to, and I think Councillor Blaze is, is right, but not. In, there was another piece to it. The, there was an acknowledgement there that there was going to be a public parking lot because that was already in motion if we didn't own it at the time. And I think the council wanted the, the committee not <coughs> to say, "Well, there's your public parking." It was really intended to explore other opportunities beyond the lot for public parking. And one of the exercises we undertook was kind of an engineering analysis of looking at the size of the roads and where could reasonably, right. comfortably, safely on-street parking be accomplished. And right. it was limited to Greenwood and Bayview just by virtue of their physical size and geography. And ultimately, it ended up being um, 
on Bayview with, with some limitations. Yeah, and I remember in that meeting, because I'm, I'm, I'm always a safety, <laughs> safety queen, um, and I'm always asking uh, Robbie, can we get emergency vehicles down there? Mm -hmm. That's always a big thing for me. Can we make sure that if something happens, we can get fire trucks and ambulances and police cars through that area? Um, so that's usually something that I'm always following up on. Uh, there obviously needs to be more. Yeah. This is not going to be solved today. I'm sorry. I know you would love for that to happen. You'd love to see it go to council today. It's not going to go to council from this meeting. Um, we have more information that we need to get from Tom to look into it. Um, I encourage you to reach out to your neighbors. It never hurts to send an email to a counselor with their feelings. Um, uh, you know, give us a little bit of time. I don't have a problem putting it on the agenda for next month. Um, but what I don't want to see is this drag out. So I want to get the information that we need, and I want to make a decision, and then we let the council go from there. Quick, if you guys have something quick, go ahead. But you have to go to the podium. <laughs> I just wanted to ask you if that ad hoc committee ever considered, um, I know it was suggested that the townspeople pay for it and they should have free parking. Uh, was a pass, a town resident uh, pass yeah. ever considered for the parking lot? Still had that. So that the I don't know. They have, they have resident passes for the ticket speech lot? Yeah. Well, they, this pass well, this then pass then there's no there's no problem then, right? Yeah, this pass is in senior mm -hmm. pass, free oh. pass. Oh, right. So there really is I'm no full no, to no reason. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Correct. There's no so people can get free parking. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's all I know. Well, you have to be. Yeah, you do have to pay for it, but it's you can't. I'm not sure what the age is. 62 or whatever. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Yeah. But but in response to that, this is not unlike what we've done in Pine Point. Uh, right. There are sections of Pine Point, not King Street, because oh. of its physical dimensions, but on is it East Grand? Not East Grand. The uh, it is East Grand. No, it's it's called something different. Jones Creek Jones Drive, Creek. where there is on-street parking because the road is wide yeah. enough and can safely accommodate it. So I I think that same sort of thought process came to play in this analysis. But that's, that's where else can we? But, but Tom, that's totally different. Jones Jones Creek Road is is away from the water. It's it's not sitting on the ocean. You don't have surfers down there stripping. It's you know, this surfing. problem is not parking. This problem is terrible behavior by people. That is the problem. And that's what we have to address. It's the behavior. It's not the parking. I was just trying well, to provide the you know, um, context yeah. as to uh, why I understand we did it. That. Yeah, that's just what I was going to say. It really isn't the parking. It's the behavior. behavior. And if you could solve the behavior problem, um, mm -hmm. I mean, you could calm the ocean. Yeah. You know, <laughs> um, you know that that's the solution. I, I know. Mean, it isn't necessarily right. the parking. I I met. I was on the beach a lot last summer. I met wonderful people yeah. that parked there for half an hour. Um, from many places, and it's the behavior that yeah. is the issue. And it's mm -hmm. just ongoing, and it's getting worse because there are more people using the beach, and there are more people there year-round using the beach. Um, so will we tabling this to the next meeting? I need a motion to oh. table this to the next well, I meeting. I move that we table to the next meeting. Second. Sure. Uh, all those in favor? Okay, it's a vote. Can I make a request? Yes, please go ahead. For you folks, if you can speech, come back to the next meeting with some, I know I'm going to say it again, but with some possible solutions other than banning parking. Okay? I just want to, I don't care what they are, just throw them out there. I want to hear them. So, so we can have a discussion. We'll do, we'll do, we will do the same thing. We'll give you what, we'll do what we're asking you to do for us. We'll do the same for you. Um, we'll also get some reports from Tom, mm -hmm. and we'll really look into this and you have our word that we'll I mean, I'm do the best we can to try to figure this out for you. You have the right to, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hear your voice in my head for the next four weeks of thinking about, I wouldn't want that in front of my house. 
I wouldn't want my kids watching that. But I also have a duty to all of Scarborough. So that's, you know, that's the catch. That's where it gets really tricky. So, but we'll, you have a commitment from three of us to really try to work through this, okay? Thank you. And I appreciate you guys taking the time to come in here and, and make this presentation. It really helps. Thank you. Just a final question for me to make sure I have what, uh, I'll get you what you need. Yep. Would you also like me to make the Surfrider Foundation aware? I yeah. mentioned them because they're the Can only known constituency. There was other yeah. public interest, but uh, I don't know how else to. Uh, I'm in contact with them pretty regularly. Okay. So if you want to, or if, if you want yeah. me to, it doesn't matter. Okay. It might. I just would hate for the committee to be accused of you know, yeah, having no, a conversation yeah. without no, absolutely. Why don't it. you make the first reach out, and then right. um, can you CC me on it? And sure. then Okay, thanks. Um, okay, uh, item number seven is the future meeting dates. So after going over some things and trying to figure out and juggling things around, what I've come up with is, um, Tracy, can you look into um, Tuesday mornings, 9.30? Can you look into that? Um, the third Tuesday would be wonderful, if possible. If it can't be the third, look at any Tuesdays in the month. I appreciate moving it to, mo to morning. 930, yeah. <laughs> 9.30, please. Okay. Is that okay with you guys? What date? We don't know you yet. Oh, okay. We're looking at the third Tuesday of the month, but Tracy's going to need to see if, if something comes up that um, is a very hot button topic, if we need to, we can hold a night ordinance meeting and I can, if I have some notice, I can work that into my schedule. Um, I'm a single mom and um, I have a lot of committee meetings at night, so anything I can do during the day is just very helpful to me. So I appreciate that that, that everyone is so accommodating. So well, I appreciate you moving it until the morning because yeah. it's hard for me to tear myself February away sometimes 30th. from my business. February 17th. 9.30 is available, and then we can go from, I can book out the rest. This is school vacation week, isn't it? Yes, it is. It is. President's Day. That's okay. I'll, I, can, I can work around that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So February 17th at 9.30 will be when we, f when we um, start our new rotation. So it will be the third Tuesday of every month at 9.30 in the morning, unless we need to move it to a night because we have something big going on. And if that is the case, you will have plenty of notice for that to people so that people can make accommodations for that. All right? Are we good? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think we have, we, it's, not, um, it's not listed on here, but I think we have enough on our agenda for next month that we don't need to worry about that right now. No, I will have ordinance amendment suggestions for you uh, for the property tax assistance ordinance. Perfect. That will be the first order of business, and then we'll take up Pine Point Parking yep. and Bayview. And Bayview. Okay. Behavior. Yep. Sounds like And fine. so all I need now is a motion for adjournment. I move, I move we adjourn. Yes, second. All those in favor? We're done. Thanks, guys.